What it do, YouTube? Back at it again. 86 got your fix. Uh, this video, I'm taking y'all with me on this one. Uh, this is a Scion XB, and when you're in gear and got your foot on the brake, the idle is a little bit low, uh, where it's kind of like has that droning effect, and it's just uh, it's just irritating. So one of the things you want to start is clean out your um, throttle body. A lot of people say idle air control valve. This car, I believe, do not have an idle air control valve. So we're actually going to take off the entire throttle body, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, we're going to take it off, and we're going to clean it. And I also have a special technique of cleaning it as well. So stick around, and let's hop right to it. I did half the work for you guys, so just sit back and uh, follow me. First thing you want to do is uh, 10 millimeter, take off your your uh, dust cover. And those are two screws right here. Just pull that right off. Uh, here goes your, your uh, air box. So there's a tab on this side, just one, and you have the mass airflow sensor. Unplug that right there and pull out your air box. Might as well take out your air filter at the same time. Then you have your air duct. Uh, there's a hose coming off the side right here to the top of the valve cover, pull that off. <clears throat> and then on this side, there's a little like, uh, like a purge valve or something like that. Uh, you're not gonna mess with it, but it is connected to your air ducts. So you're gonna pull that apart. And then you're gonna then once when you do that, uh, you're going to reach down and find the clamp that connects uh, to your throttle body. You can see your throttle body back there. Also, there's this little clamp. Uh, this one you can squeeze by hand and remove it. Just see it comes across the top and goes to this like purge valve which is all, it was connected right here. So pull that out, then pull the clamp. Uh, if it's, if you can't, if it's hard to get down here, which most people use pliers to undo that clamp right there. You can get you a nifty little tool like this, which basically grabs onto hose clamps and ratchets it down, ratchets it. <laughs> ratchet down on it and holds it steady so it becomes like a one-man job type of tool very nice to have so you'll do that right here and then pull your air duct out the way then we'll have your uh, your entire air box exposed I mean, not your air box, your throttle body, which they are two more hoses here. It looked like there's a hose back there. And of course the plug that controls it. And then right around the ring of the intake, there's four screws. I already took three of them out. I got one more to go. So let's remove that. And just to give you guys, look at that. Look at how dirty it is in there. And that can be the cause of, of the low idle. Um, air's not flowing through the idle control part of the throttle body correctly and it's just
probably just jacking stuff up. So all four screws is out. Now I can move the throttle body around, but I have to take off these two hoses and that plug. And just like that, the throttle body is free. So the camera and I'm gonna show you guys a little nifty tool again I think it's called like a hose clamp grabber and I can clamp down on it get it down and out of the way like that and then I can release now let me work on the second one the second one is on this back side which is harder to get to but this thing is like kind of slim line so it kind of works perfectly So we grab that one, uh, wiggle it out the way. And then release it. So now you guys see the Two hoses are disconnected. Now to get the hoses off, you just want to twist and pull. And we lost some uh, radiator fluid. And the same thing with this. Oh, good. He's doing good. <laughs> now screw up. Uh, you guys are back sorry about that uh, yeah when I took off that last water hose um, water got on the camera and it was making it zoom it got on the screen and it was making it zoom in and out so um, it looks like I didn't know it but these two lines are water lines so it looked like they have some type of cooling system that runs through the um, throttle body which is pretty interesting on a four-cylinder car
So I got the hoses off, the screws out. I can completely pull it off. There's one more hose on this back side. This one has no clamp on there, so I'm gonna just uh, twist and pull. All right, that's off. And now I can flip this around to see the plug. And it looks like you just, you can see there's a locking tab right there. So you just wanna push this down and pry it off. Sometimes they get a, a little stuck. There we go. All right, throttle body is off. Now let's take a look in the inside. So you can see it's gunked up right here. Yeah, keep your hoses up. Like how I got it right here. Keep them up because they will leak if they go down further than a certain point. So that looks pretty bad. Now let's check out the throttle body. You can see gunked up in there. Uh, I'll flip it over. And, oh yeah, this feels like very like oily. Yeah, it feels super oily. So yeah, here goes the unit and yeah, it's like a built-in uh, idle air control valve. So there's no idle air control valve to just replace on this car, on this car. either replace this whole throttle body or clean it out. And I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna clean it. So give me just a second. All right, back in the house, taking it to the house. So I got my throttle body and we're gonna dunk it in this, which is a, a sonic cleaner. Um, you can clean pretty much anything metal. Uh, good for jewelry, good for glasses, stuff like that. And this one also has heat control. So if you guys wanna see the brand, Chicago Electric, I think I got it from Harbor Freight. Good old Harbor Freight. So I got the TC, uh, this temperature control, which is that light, the heat is on and what I do is I just fill it up with the water. And it can use a little bit more. So there's a max line and a minimum line. So I'm at the max because I'm going to dunk the whole thing in. Now this has a bit of elect, uh electrical component, which is this top portion. So I'm going to just dunk it in just straight down. I'm not going to get the plug in there. And then after I clean it, I'm going to let it dry for a good a good while before I slap it on there. So slap it back on a car. And you can see how uh, gunked up this thing is. So what I'm gonna do is just wipe off, you know, the access what I can reach. 
Damn, look at this thing. Get another paper towel. And you can open the butterfly valve. Just do it slowly because it is on a electronic component. So when you're cleaning after you're done, you know, uh, what I could do, you could stick a, like a socket or a pen or something if you don't want to hold it with your finger. And to, you know, that's so you can clean the lids of the valve. So if you don't have a sonic tank, which most people don't, uh, any type of cleaner, but one of the th cleaners that people don't think about, which is the best cleaner, is gas, gas itself. So gas and a toothbrush, which is 10 times cheaper than the what the the uh, cleaners that they sell, the intake cleaners and the throttle body cleaner and da 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 da. You're paying what five, six dollars for a can when you probably got some extra gas laying around that's gonna do a way better job. Uh, I even clean like dirt bike. Uh, carburetors that's been sitting a long time and uh, take all the jet take everything out the jets everything just dunk it sitting in a, a, a bucket of gas for like 12 hours or something like that and it'll come out super clean so that's just a little 86 inside insiders so you see just wiping this came off pretty pretty clean so I'm going to shut this valve. It's just along the edges are still black. So that's about as clean as is probably going to get. So right now this is straight water, which you can use straight water, but I'm going to put a little bit of Dawn. A little bit of Dawn in there. to help it out. The water is still like lukewarm, but I'm gonna run the shit out of this thing. So I'm gonna basically uh, do multiple cycles. So basically submerge it in the water as far as I can without Put an electronic part. Without putting all the electronics in the water, which is probably about here is good. Turn up the time. I think this is in seconds. So 480. 480 seconds. Now when I start this, you're going to see clouds of a little like smoke, but it's actually dirt that it's vibrating off of the parts. And while this is running, we can go back outside and clean the intake, the, the bottom base plate side, and just get things prepped for when uh, you finish this and put it back on the car. So let's get this started. It might mess up the the voice or frequency of the camera. So I'm going to play it a little bit and then we'll go back to the garage. Thank you. 
So basically, I'm going to just let that run. So now back to cleaning the car. And, you know, that's pretty much it, y'all. So, I mean, you can go out and buy a throttle body intake cleaner. Or just get you some gas and we'll do a lot cheaper. You could do more damage if you're cleaning a lot of parts. Uh, more than what this can cover. And it, it's, it cleans way better. Don't tell nobody. So now we're back to the car and so basically we're just going to clean this up, prep it while that thing is running in there. Uh, in the sonic cleaner, I'm probably going to do uh, probably like four or five cycles and then dry it all off, clean it up, use a toothbrush, anything small cleaner that can get into the fine cracks, clean it all up. Always reverse the process when you're putting it back on. Uh, always take pictures. That helps big time, when you, especially when you're dealing with a lot of little hoses and stuff. That helps big time on remembering how to you know put stuff back together. Also, a good uh, rule of thumb, whenever you're working something that's going into something, you know, stuff it with paper or something like that or towel to keep stuff from falling in. Because if something falls in there, we will be shit out of luck. So I'm going to spray this down. You know, wipe it clean. And most of these intakes have uh, a reusable seal. So you shouldn't have to take this out or replace it. Just make sure you clean it up real good before you put your new one on. And that's pretty much it. 86 got your fix. Let me know on other things you guys want to see. I mean, I'll be having a bunch of ideas, just, you know, don't know what to put out there. Or So I try to, you know, do something that's really not out there yet. So let me know. You know, we can dive, dive into whatever. All right, my brother, peace. And see you on the flip side. And hopefully this fixes that problem. Uh, if it don't fix that problem, the next thing you want to try is your spark plugs. Uh, uh, also check your air fi filter.